So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over worksheet number three, equilibrium three worksheet. So make sure you've got that out. Got your calculator out and you've got your uh, pencil ready because I want you to be working these problems with me. And what this worksheet will do is give us some basic insights of some basic equilibrium problems, uh, get an insight on KSP, and even delve into what I call the quadratic catastrophe. Yeah, that sounds exciting. So let's get started. Okay, so we're into equilibrium worksheets, and we're dealing with reactions at equilibrium. We know that because we can see this double arrow. So in this first question, what they want us to do is calculate the equilibrium constant. Now you notice they give us Kc. And it's like, what the heck is Kc? Well, sometimes we write K a couple different ways. We have Keq, equilibrium constant, or just bland old K. Or you're going to see a lot of times with us Kc or Kp. And what that represents is an equilibrium constant using concentrations, molarities. And sometimes you'll see Kp. These are equilibrium constants using what? Using partial pressures. We use partial pressures. It's polite to use the parentheses. When we use concentrations, we use the brackets. Okay? And understand we use molarities for concentration. And we use partial pressures like atmosphere as a pressure unit. Okay? Understanding that also pressure... Uh, you can use uh, for gases, uh, you can also use uh, a molarity for concentration for a gas. So any case, don't get lost with Kc means. So any case, what they're giving us in this problem is they're giving us the value for all our reactants and our products. So they're giving us all this good data here. And what they're giving us is the concentration. Notice the molarity. Okay, so that's a concentration, so we're going to solve for the Kc. So they want us to come up with the equilibrium constant given the values for the concentration when this reaction is at equilibrium. If it's not at equilibrium, we would call this what? Very good. We would call it a Q, a reaction quotient. But since we're at equilibrium, which is actually easier to measure because we know at equilibrium, the reactants and the products stay at a constant uh, concentration. So it's easy to measure. So let's go find our C. So in order to find our equilibrium constant, we're going to need our equilibrium expression. So what do we know? K, K is equal to, or in this case, Kc, which just means for concentration, products over reactants. So our products are uh, ammonia. And because there's a coefficient, coefficients become exponents all over the products or the reactants, so products over reactants, sorry, so N2, which would go to the first power, and we would go th uh, H2 to the third power. So we did products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, and solids and liquids don't apply. And solids and liquids don't apply because they do not have a changing concentration or partial pressure, as we've talked about at length. So, now that we have our equation, which is unique for every what? Equation or a chemical reaction, keep in mind, there are going to be some equations where you write the Kc for, or this equilibrium expression, sometimes called a law of mass action. Sometimes there's going to be solids or liquids as the phases. And if they are, they would not be included here. In this case, it's an easy example. They're all gases. Okay, notice they're all molarities, so it's that example I was talking about. We're going to take gases, I'm going to use their molarities because they're mixtures, and go that way. So any case, moving forward, all we got to do now is plug in the values. So I want ammonia squared, so I go find, okay, my ammonia, which is going to be 0 0.00272, and that's the concentration of ammonia, and it's squared. And then I have my nitrogen, which is 0 0.0402. And that's to the first power because there's a coefficient of 1. And, of course, I have my H2, which is uh, 0.207, And that's going to be to the third power. So now it's just a simplification. And when you take... 
this times itself divided by parentheses, this times this cubed, close the parentheses. All right, you put that in your calculator, and you could pause me if you want. All right, but make sure you're able to do that, and you should get a value something close to 0 0.105. Notice there's no units. It's a dimensionless value. So hopefully you were able to put that together in your calculator, and that's going to equal equilibrium constant. We'll call it Kc. Just to make everyone know that we're talking about a concentration equilibrium constant, not an equilibrium constant from partial pressures. You may say, well, why do we care? They actually are a little bit different. We'll learn later on that these are interchangeable through an equation. Okay, so that's all that was. So that's a skill where all you're going to do is plug your values in to your equilibrium expression. And that's a really important skill that you'll be using as we go through these types of equilibrium problems. Okay, so let's continue with another type of equilibrium problem. Now this is specific for a type of reaction. We're not going to call this Kc or Kp. Here in these types of reactions, we're going to call them Ksps. So in number two, we have a reaction. Now normally they give you the reaction, but hey, we can work this out, as the Beatles would say. So what we're going to take is we're going to take silver, chromate, CrO4, and a mixture of solid silver and water is stirred for several days. Well, okay, it's, it's being mixed for several days so that equilibrium is established between the salt dissolving in the water. It's giving you a, um, a, a visual. So we've got this solid is an equilibrium, double arrow, with its what? ions and you should be able to pull that out we've dealt with silver in lab so that means this little two here means we have two silver and we should know silver is positive one two silver positives okay that's of course aqueous you don't have to put that there it's implied the ions are aqueous but hey i'm tall and we've got one chromate ion cro4 and that'll have to be negative two so that is our reaction it's an ionization reaction and yes we can get a K from that, okay? It's a reaction at equilibrium, and as we talked about in class today, an equilibrium constant at a certain temperature, and they're giving me temperatures with equilibrium constants. Notice, every time we're dealing with equilibrium, okay, they should be telling me a certain temperature. Why? Because equilibrium constants are temperature specific. That's an important little fact as we go forward. All right, so this temperature has to stay constant, and there is a position by which, in nature, this equilibrium constant what likes to be at. It may favor more reactants or products just based on the universe's preference in total entropy. So every reaction has a position that favors more reactants or products. Now, they're telling me that this K is actually equal to 1 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. And it doesn't have any units. Now, that's pretty small. That's clearly favoring the reactants. Now, the type of K we call in this case, we call this a Ksp. Okay? So it's an equilibrium constant, just like we've done above. And like any other K, it's a Kq. It's products over reactants. Coefficients become exponents. And solids and liquids do not apply. However, because it's a type of reaction where a solid breaks apart into its ions, this SB means solubility product, it's, okay? And there's a reason for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to understand what kind of value for Ksp we should have. Above, we had products over reactants. Coefficients become exponents. Solids and liquids do not apply. So we're going to do the same thing here because what they're trying to find is... They want, they want the value of Ksp, just like we did in question one. So we're going to have to write the value of the K, except this time we're just going to call it Ksp. And the reason for Ksp, again, is that it kind of tells the person looking at this value of K, oh, this is for a particular type of reaction where a solid breaks apart into an ions. When you're given a Kc, that could be for any reaction, gases, aqueous solutions. So a Ksp kind of lets the researcher or chemist know we're dealing with this certain type of reaction. And here's where it makes it, here's where it looks a little different. So we have products of reactants. So, oh, okay, so we got Ag plus, 
That's a product. All right. And brackets for molarities. Okay. And it's positive. And there's a two. So products over reactants, coefficients become exponents. Okay. And the other product is CRO4, negative two. And that does not have an exponent. Well, it has an exponent of one, which is, you don't have to write that there. Okay. So that is, oh, wait a minute. Then we have products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, products over reactants. But look at this. Solids and liquids do not apply. So products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, but the solid and liquids do not apply because they do not have a molarity. So I do not have a denominator. So KSP values or KSP equilibrium expressions, that's what this is, and that's a skill you must have. You must be able to write the expression, which is really a formula that helps us solve for what the value of K is, no matter what we call it, right? We did the same thing up here, except these were all gases, so we were able to write the equilibrium expression. Here, it's a solid. So we don't put the reactant. So anytime we're doing a KSP, it's always going to be, because KSPs are basically reactions of ionization, we always have a solid breaking apart into ions. We're never going to have a denominator, which means we're always multiplying by the ions. And that's what SP means, a product of solubility. What solubility mean? The ability to break apart into ions. So the higher amount of ions you have, you've guessed it, the more soluble you are. Why? Why? Well, if my KSP favors is a higher number, what's KSP? Products over reactants. So the higher my K, that means the more products are favored in this equilibrium which means there's more ions. So this equilibrium expression just doesn't tell me who's favored. It tells me who is more soluble, who breaks apart into more ions. So equilibrium constants are very powerful. As we'll see in acid and base, they'll tell us something about the strength of acids. All right. So it's important with salts that barely dissolve to know how soluble they are. All things break apart into ions. Now, if you look at this value, for the KSP, it's very small, very small, which means if we're going to do this diagram that we did today in class, it would look something like this, right? This is 100% reactants, 100% products, and our K is very close. Like this would be the 100% line for the reactants, which means it's easy to have Qs that are what? Bigger than K, which means most things do not like to break apart into ions. Okay, I hope you can see that. So this KSP, the higher the KSP, the more this K value moves this way, right? Which means there's a greater and greater potential for you to what? Move in this direction and be spontaneous and break into ions. But bottom line is, it's a product of the ion concentration. The more ions that are free, the more it goes forward, the bigger the KSP or the K. All right? Hope you see that. Please play that over if you do not get it. Higher the KSP, the more ions. That's why it's the product of the solubility. Okay, enough being said there. So what do we have here, party people? What we have is we have a reaction at equilibrium. They want to know what the KSP is, but unlike the other question, they didn't give me the values directly. In question one, they gave me the values absolutely directly. Here, they're not doing that. Here, we have to do an extra calculation. So, what do they do here? Well, they said the concentration of the silver ion in equilibrium is this. Okay, I must have misspoke. I thought they had given me the KSP. So, this is not the KSP. This is just a concentration of one of the ions. So, I know that this concentration of the silver is right here, okay? Now, but I don't know what the chromate is. So what can really help here is what we call an ice table. Ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 I'm not going to start rapping. Okay, so ice, vanilla ice, or ice, ice, baby. So what we're going to do here is draw an ice table. Now I'm going to draw it kind of on the other side because I'm running out of space here. So ice is initial concentration, 
C is change, and this is at equilibrium. So initially, and I'm not going to write anything over here because, well, the solid's not changing. I can only put values that change. So initially, when I drop the solid in water, we're always going to look at it from initial point of view. This has zero concentration. Let's pretend I'm a princess, and we drop this in, and we get a zero initially. So there's nothing. When I first drop it in, it's a solid. How much does it go forward? Well, that's going to depend upon the KSP, but it does go forward. It has to. Some of it has to dissolve. It's got a value of K, no matter how big or small. So it starts out zero. What's the change? Well, for every one of these, isn't there one of chromate? At every one of silver chromate, there's one of these. Do the stoichiometry. It's very important. So we get a plus X. What's happening over here? Well, every one of these, there's two particles that break apart. So this would be plus 2X. So what would be at equilibrium? Well, what's 0 plus X? X. What's 0 plus 2X? Two 2X. Two at equilibrium, you're going to add this X to the 0. Since it's X plus 0, it's, just, it's going to be X. <laughs> and if I'm adding 2X to the 0, it's 2X. So that's how we use this. Now, how is, it, uh, how is this easy to understand? Well, they said the silver ion concentration is 1.3 times 10 negative 4. So what they mean, party people, is I can, that's my 2x. They're giving me the value of the 2x. So let's put it in. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, that is my 2x. Hmm, can anyone think what the x would be? You bet your donkey. Okay, it's half that. Remember, this is x, this is 2x, this is x. So stoichiometrically, there has to be a half. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4, divide by 2. That's going to be my what? Remember, don't forget that this is my 2x, and this is my x. All right? Now, if I add that to my 0 at equilibrium, okay, you can see where I'm going, it's going to be 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. Mr. Grotsky, I see this already. Why are you continuing down this road? Because there's going to be other problems we're going to see that's going to need the entire ice table. All right. So one point, uh, this would be again 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 2. So you can see stoichiometry is coming back now. Okay. For every one of these salts, two of these. For every one of these, there's one. So because we're making twice the number of silver, Chromate ions have to be half. Okay, so now I'm done, almost done. I have my values. The ice table let me think about what I'm doing here. You plug them in. So KSP is going to equal the silver ion concentration, which is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4. And do not forget that squared. Yes, that was the 2x value. But when you use the KSP expression, it's squared. Easy to forget that. Remember, when you build the KSP formula, so to speak, it's based on the equation and only. There are two silvers there. Okay? Now we're going to times it by half the value. So 1.3 divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 2. And when you multiply them together, Okay, make sure you square that and then times it by uh, 1.3 divided by 2 times 10 to negative 2. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, okay, I get something close to, and then probably rounding, 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. And that's my KSP value. So we would say the equilibrium constant value, just like we did up here. Kc was equal to 0.105. We're going to say Ksp is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, and I'll do it again. So it's 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. That is what Ksp equals. Okay, and you can see that's a tiny equilibrium constant, which means who's favored? The reactants, very good, okay? Which means what? If the reactants are favored, I have this kind of drawing that I did yesterday. My K is down here, 
it's almost impossible for a Q to be what? Smaller than K if it's that small, which means most of the time your Q, which is a position of reactance not at K, is going to be what? Q is going to be greater than K, which means the reaction almost always is flowing in the reverse, which means your forward reaction is what? Non-spontaneous, which means this is a very insoluble compound. Does it break apart into ions? Yeah, not very much. Look at that. The solubility product, or the amount of ions, is small. Okay? I spent some time talking about that because it's really important you understand that. Let's continue. The next part of number two, and this is really important, this ties in everything. They're telling me that if the concentration of silver is 1.5 times 10 negative 4, and the concentration of dichromate is this, during a reaction, describe what will happen in the reaction vessel to achieve equilibrium. So what you're saying is they're giving me values that are not at equilibrium. Hello, what they're doing is giving me the values I can solve for Q, right? These are values that are not at equilibrium. So it's Q. What's Q? Q is equal to exactly what K is. Okay, so let's write it. It's the concentration of the silver plus squared over the chromate. Q and K, those equations that we get to evaluate Q and K, or KSP, however you want to call it, are the same. One's at equilibrium, one's not. So what does Q equal? Okay, so let's plug it in. Q is equal to the concentration of the silver, 1.45 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, don't forget what? Squared. Okay, times chromate, which is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, so we just use our handy dandy calculators. And what we should get is Q is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 12. That is our Q. What does this tell me? Well, here's our what? 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12 is our KSP. The Q is what? Greater than the K. So what happens? Look at the question. What will happen? What will happen? You need to be able to answer that. If the Q is greater than K, draw our diagram. K is very small. So we've got this kind of YouTube thing. The K is down here. If the Q is larger than the K, here's my Q. Here's my K. If it's larger, then it always moves toward equilibrium. That means it's going to go in the reverse. The reverse reaction spontaneous. Hello, what is the reverse reaction here? The ions becoming the solid. So the reverse reaction is the precipitation. There's going to be a precipitate. Precipitation occurs. Why? Because we're going in the what? Reverse. The ions are becoming the solid in the reverse. The forward reaction is not spontaneous. The reverse is. And we can predict using these things whether or not something will precipitate. It's not big by much, but it's definitely big. And reactions move toward what? Equilibrium. Q is greater than K. If Q is less than K, let's pretend it was over here, then we would say more of this would dissolve. We'd go in the forward direction. So that's pretty cool. We can use Ks and KSPs, our equilibrium expressions, and all of this to predict. And this is a major problem. You're going to see this over and over again for the next few days in different ways. But this, these are the basics. So let's move on. Number three is more of a classic equilibrium problem. It's not a KSP. They're mentioning just KC. Okay, so let's look at this question here. And let's get some stuff out of the way as I got overly excited. Okay, we've got a mixture of 5.0 times 10 negative 3 moles of H2. That's my reactant. And we have a certain amount of moles of iodine, another reactant, placed in a certain volume container. Okay, 
These are gases. We can still evaluate Kc if we use molarity, so we're still in the bracket area. And they're allowed to come to equilibrium. Notice the temperature is staying constant, very important. Analysis of the equilibrium mixture shows that the concentration of Hi is 1.7 times 10 negative 3. So this is essentially the same problem as number 2 in the KSP. And I'm going to show you. Even though this is not a, this is not a, a reaction where a salt is breaking apart into ions, it's essentially the same problem. Okay? So when we do an ice table, and there's our ice, ice baby tables. When we do those tables, they have to be in concentration, right? My Kc, what does it represent? Okay, concentration products. So let's do that. Hi to the second power. It's a gas, so I can use it over my reactants, H2 to the first power, and I2 to the also no one power <laughs> okay so that's my these brackets represent what molarity so this has to be molarity you can't just put throw moles in here so we're going to quickly convert to our moles down here so this 5.00 times 10 to the 3 okay is of course the same thing as 0 0.005 okay so we have 0 0.005 moles and it's placed in a 5 liter container. So both gases are at 5 liters. So I'm going to divide by 5 liters. Okay. Now careful, they're giving you four sig figs. I'm kind of simplifying this down here. So moles over liter. And do the math. You'll see it's about point, it is definitely 0 0.001 molar. Okay. So in the concentration of my H2 initially, okay, because a mixture of this is placed and then it was allowed to come to equilibrium. So this is the initial concentration, 0 0.001. I do the same thing for my um, uh, iodine. I have 0 0.001, right? What do I have? I have, uh, oh, it's 10 to the negative 2, my bad. Okay, so what I have here is 1 times 10 negative 2, so this is 0 0.01. And I'm dividing this by 5 liters. Okay. And I get 0 0.002. So all I'm doing is just taking this and putting it into a decimal, but you can just type this in your calculator if you like it and divide by the 5 liters. It doesn't matter. I just converted it to a nice number that I like. It doesn't matter. Okay, so just take this number, divide by the 5. I'm just finding the molarities. Okay. And now I'm putting them in. What was the product? I'm starting out with reactants. Remember, look above. We did this reaction here. We had zero ions. We had zero products initially at all reactants when we dropped the salt and water. So what do we have here? We've got zero. Okay, so what's the change? Well, we know that we're going to go down something. So these all are ones, right? So this is going to lose something. So this is going to be minus x, minus x. And what's this going to be? Look at the stoichiometric coefficient. For every one of these, there's two of those. So this is going to be plus 2x. Notice the sign. We're losing something here, and they're both equal because they both have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1. We're bringing back the stoichiometry. For every 1 H2, there's 2 Hi. You need one of these to be lost, hello, to gain two of those. Okay, so these are both losing the same amount because they both have the same stoichiometric coefficient. There's a 2 there. Okay. What's at equilibrium? Well, 0 0.001 minus x. That's well, we got we don't know what that is. So 0 0.001 minus x. This would be at equilibrium 0 0.002 minus x. And 2x plus 0, 2x. Okay? And sometimes we'll solve it this way. Okay? If we knew the equilibrium constant to begin with, we could solve it this way. However, 
They gave us something just like question two. They told me what? That at equilibrium, the concentration of HI is this. Ah, so at equilibrium, the concentration of HI is 1.87. So this is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. And this was the plus 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. Can anyone guess what the negative x would be? If this is 2x and this is negative x, what would that be? You've guessed it. It has to be half that value. So you take 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 and divide by 2. What you're going to get is approximately, don't forget the negative sign because you're losing negative 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3. And these are the same. 0.935, all I did was divide by 2. We've seen that before. Times 10 to the negative 3. Okay? And of course, now we can do the math, right? Now we know that what the x is. So it's going to be 0 0.01 minus, you guessed it, 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3. And this is going to be 0 0.002. You guessed it, minus, okay, 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3, okay? This 2x goes away because the 2x value is that. Remember, it's 2x plus 0. This was the 2x plus 0, so that's our value, okay? Which is, let's write it nicely, 1.87. Let's get rid of this times 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay? All right, so now we're just going to plug in to our KC formula. Okay? And you're just going to figure this out. Put this in your calculator. When you do, 0 0.001 minus 0 0.935 times 10 to the negative 3, forgot that there, is equal to what? I get 0 0.065 times 10 to the negative 3. This is 0 0.065 times 10 to the negative 3. So that's what this equates to once I do the subtraction. So I have my value for the equilibrium. And this is important. Pay attention. Focus, party people. What do I put inside an equilibrium expression? Only the equilibrium values. You can't put any of this in. Okay? What did I do above that was the same? I only put in these values that were at equilibrium. They only told me one side, and I figured out the other. These were equilibrium. In this question, these were what? Found at equilibrium. So you can only put equilibrium values into this. See? All right, now I'm going to use these values, okay, that I find in my E part of my ice, ice baby, and that's what I plug in now. So KC, or just equilibrium, okay, I have my HI, which is 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3, and I'm going to square that over the concentration of H2, which is 0.065 times 10 to the, what, negative 3? And you'd multiply it by the same number. Some people could see, why don't I just cube the bottom number? You could. I'm just showing you for those that don't see that. Okay? So this is my HI. These are my H, H2 and I's here. And now I just do the math. This squared times this, times this. Make sure it's parentheses if you're dividing by. And when I put this into my handy data, handy data calculator, I get a KC equal to 50.7. Okay? And that is the first side. So what were the, the requisite skills here? Number one, you must be able to come up with this expression from the what? reaction. That's easy.
We've said that enough. Products of reactants. The coefficients become exponents. Solids and liquids do not apply. What else? You must be able to understand if it's a KSP, okay, that ice tables are able to help you. It's only the values, what? At the E that we can put into the expression. Sometimes they give me one of the values. And by using what? Stoichiometry, I can figure out the others. Okay, so this has been a lesson of the basic use of an ice table, the basic understanding of equilibrium constants and how to plug values in. I was going to do the um, catastrophe of the uh, next problem, but I'll do that in class tomorrow. Okay, what I would like you to do to impress me is I would like you to take equilibrium constants too and do that. I know I'm asking a lot, but do that. Do that one, and you should see this stuff popping in there. It's slight, it's, and it should put everything together for you a little bit. So yes, equilibrium constant two, please do that. Thanks for playing along.